This is the brand new six, uh, SP6190 modem and we will see how we can access the flash inside. First, there is a screw here. Take this out. Use knife to cut open. It took a while. There are two clips here, one clip here, and one clip here, and one clip here, one clip here. Now we can have this opened. And let's take a look of the board. Looks like there is a NAND flash here and we might be able to use the Ulink NAND to access it. I need to do some measurement of the current and see if we can use the power from the Ulink NAND. I'm using this power supply to measure the current of the 3.3 uh, volt if I apply it to here. Just make sure the Ulink NAND has this enough power to support it. So. This is the 3.3 volt, and I'm adjusting to 3.3 volt. Now I know this is ground, this is 3.3 volt. And let's touch this thing, this side, and this side. And it says 200 milliamp, so if I were using the 3.3 volt from any source, it will draw 200 milliamps. And because the Unink NAND can support uh, up to 400 or 500, uh, 500 uh, milliamps current, so I'm going to directly use the Unink NAND to access this device. This is the Unink NAND um, connect to the SP6190 with the clip, and this clip needs to be carefully clipped on. And here I plug in the USB. In the configuration, I'm using TM1602 because this is also one meg of flash uh, modem. And I do configure this fl uh, flash to give power here. And let's detect it and make a good backup. So this will be a fully backup of the flash. The programming procedure will be exactly the same as the 1602. I will create a folder called SP6190 and Let's save the flash, call backup. Okay, now, now let's try to erase the flash and do a, a quick scan, let's say. Yeah, this flash is erased. Now let's program back.
Let's verify the programming. Okay, program passed. So all in all, uh, programming the SB6190 is quite easy with the Ulink NAND. Uh, however, I found uh, sometimes this clip itself uh, becomes loose over the time. So if you find its connection uh, is not robust, sometimes get a zero zero. What I did is I use a needle to push each pins a little bit further. And I found this sometimes make the connection more robust.